there, this is Bethany Barnard, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the 12 Weeks to a Wow Christmas with Bethany and Layla. Layla Meinke is a fellow demonstrator who lives in California, and I'm here in the Panhandle of Florida, and together we've come up with 12 lovely projects to share with you over the coming 12 weeks. 12 Weeks lands us at December 17th, which is just one week before Christmas Eve. So we're excited to show you these different projects for Christmas to help you get ready for the holidays. And I hope you'll subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a project. The first project that we're gonna do appropriately enough is a countdown block calendar. I love this calendar. I love the idea of counting down. I'm still a kid at heart and I want to see those days disappear till it's time for Christmas. Now we're going to make this project as you see it here, but I do have some other samples here that I'll show you so that you can decorate them however you wish, but you'll see how to put them all together through this particular video and we'll also have PDFs for you. This project could be a countdown for a bride and you could decorate it for a wedding. So there are other things that you could do with this. You could have a seasonal one. It could be a year round calendar depending on how you decorate it. I've also used our Is It Christmas Yeti set and our snowflake paper to make this one, which is pretty shiny. And then again, I've done another one using the Christmas Yeti and colored them up this way. And I'm looking forward to making some with the Santa Express for my grandchildren as well. But just so that you know, you can find your favorite stamp set bundle to make this and um, be just as happy with it. But I'm gonna take you through how to make this one in particular. So the things that you'll need, and I'm going to go through everything that you'll need to get started. And that way, once you've gathered them, you can pick up the video at this point and we can get started. So first of all, you're going to need six one inch evening evergreen circles. And you can do that with a circle punch or I use the stylish shapes one inch circle punch punches, not punches, dies. This one is for the evening evergreen and these are for the cherry cobbler. So you need six of each. You're gonna need the stamped numbers and we use the Alpha Best set, which is a great bundle that has a coordinating punch. You have all these different backgrounds you can use. And even though it's called Alpha Best, it does give us the numbers plus a few other kind of cute things. So this is a great set. And we'll be using it um, on some of the other projects that are coming up in the next 12 weeks. But what you will need on your blocks is zero, one, two, three, four, five on one block and one, two, three, six, seven, eight on the other block. It's important that you know what these numbers are so that you can get all of the combinations between one and 25. In fact, these will give you all the combinations for an entire month if you want to just use it as a year long calendar of what day it is that month. So half of them in, are in the cherry cobbler and half of them are in the evening evergreen. Additionally, you'll need six squares of DSP cut up, six in the evening evergreen and, and soft succulent and six in the cherry cobbler. These are both from the Lights Aglow six by six DSP that's found in our mini catalog, July to December. I cut them at one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. But if you like more of a border around your blocks, then you're gonna wanna do it at one and three quarters by one and three quarters. So a 12 total, six of each color. And then on a sheet of cherry cobbler that's cut at four and a quarter by five and a half, you're gonna use our Stampin' Up Split Textures die, and you're gonna put one in each corner, leaving a little bit of a border on each corner. You don't wanna go straight to the edge. And so you'll have two on that one sheet. 
And then for decorating purposes, we're gonna be using leaves of holly bundle. And so I cut out with the die this for the greeting, and then three leaves and some holly berries. Again, this is stamped in the evening uh, evergreen onto, this is important, I should have said it earlier, because the numbers are also on the very vanilla, and I've stamped these on the very vanilla. You don't have to do very vanilla, but you just want to be consistent throughout, whether you do basic white or very vanilla. Now for the holder for this uh, block calendars for the blocks that we're going to make, you're going to start with a five and a half, well, if you start with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock and you cut down at five and a half, then you'll have your five and a half by 11 piece and you'll have left over a three by 10, make sure you cut off that last inch so that you have a three by 10 and not a three by 11. That should leave you this little piece here that you won't be using, <laughs> but that's basically a full sheet of cardstock. And then finally, for your two cubes, you're gonna have six by eight and a half, and you're gonna score them I want you to know that in your directions on your PDF, I have six by eight and a half, and then I have, and I'm gonna score this with you, but I just wanted you to know the symbols. L means landscape. So that means that you will put your uh, piece of cardstock in more in the landscape orientation as opposed to the portrait. So just so you know, the L means landscape and the P means portrait, and that will help you to read those instructions. Now we're gonna start by making a block, but we are only gonna make one because it's the same principle regardless of whether it's the cherry cobbler or the evening evergreen. And to keep this video from being too long, cause it is kind of a long project, I'm only gonna make one block with you. So on the one half inch side here, I'll take these directions off or these score marks. Oh, you know what? I was going to take you through scoring this. Well, at least this is the easy one. And I still have another one here. So, and I prefer the Simply Score. I know you can do it in your trimmer and that's great. I don't think you get as deep of a score, but it sure is convenient to have it on there. But I also, for a lot of scoring, find the Simply Scoreboard well worth it. So if you don't have one, I would consider it. So this is for the blocks. And as we use these pieces, I'll go through this with you. But in the portrait orientation, you're going to score it two and four. And then in the landscape, you're going to do, again, two four, six, and eight. Now I have already scored these. You can probably see that already, but I'm repeating it so that you can follow along, but it's easier for me to have pre-scored it to see the numbers given that I'm half blind. So that's how we score this. And as I said, I'm just gonna make a, a evening evergreen block with you because the principle is the same for the cherry cobbler and so you'll just repeat that and you're going to fold all of these in and I love to use a bone folder to get a nice crisp score mark I think it makes it easier all around and it also makes it easier to cut. Now I've already cut off the two half inch pieces here, rectangles. And if you want, you can miter. That's what that's called when you do an angle there. You do not have to, but it helps when you're pu putting the flaps in to do that. So then you're gonna cut up each one of these score lines to the very first while you hold this in a landscape position to the very first score mark that you come to. And then you're gonna flip it around and you're gonna do the same thing. And you are not gonna miter these. Sometimes when we make boxes, it's appropriate to do some mitering, but not on this particular box. 
Okay, and so then the last one, I'm making a mess here, guys. I'm trying to go fast because I know it's going to be a long video. And you can just move ahead if you're done. Okay, and then you're going to fold this flap in as well. I love the mono adhesive liquid glue. I think it's our strongest, even stronger than, say, Terran tape or even our old red baloney tape is what they used to call it. But I just think this is really a nice, strong glue. So once you have put glue on the tab and folded it inward, you're now going to, you've got four equal panels. So you're going to do halfway through the two panels and you're just going to close it. And I like to use my bone folder to close that too. Okay, and so that should give you a pretty good square for the cube, just like that. And I just realized before you glue it while it's open, <laughs> but you'll see how this really is not that much of a science, but every one of every other one of these, you just want to cut half the tab off. It's just to reduce the bulk when you close it and you want that on this box. So just, and it really doesn't matter if you don't, if you get it right at the halfway mark or a little more or a little less, a little less is probably better than a little more if you're gonna air. Okay, so I meant to do that before we actually glued it together, but I actually had an issue and was practically finished filming this when I realized it and I had to start over and score everything again so now I'm feeling a little rushed. I like to look at which panel on the outside looks better because that's going to be the one that gets the glue. Now the two half ones will go in first and these look about the same however I do them. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick a flap and glue, just get it glued on top. And close that in. All right, and then same thing on the other side. Put the half ones in first. See if there's one that looks nicer than the other. Yeah, I like this one better, so we'll... You don't have to worry too much about, you know, which one stays on the outside or whatever. It's really just a case of um, either of them are gonna be fine. But, you know, while you have a chance to make a choice, that's what we did, okay? So that's how you get your cube together. So there's our cube, see? It's a cute cube. Then you're gonna take these panels and you're gonna put one on each side all the way around. I'm gonna do one here for you. And I'm not going to cover all six sides because that would take up time that you don't need because you know how to cover these and you can pause it if you're going along until you've got all your sides covered. But so we have, we'll cover all of these sides and then you want to take a green circle here and then looking at our numbers you need a one, actually, uh, yeah, a one. Look, I have a seven already on a block from the one I was doing before. So we're gonna make this a seven. And we're gonna do that in the evergreen. And we're gonna start by first doing this outline, and I'm hoping I still have room left on here. This is what happens when you make a mistake in filming. It's not as easy as it looks, guys. 
and I'm pretty new at it. Okay, so there's our seven. And then take in our trusty old punch, and this might not reach because I've done it there. So I'm going to now take this in. And I could spend my time making that work, but I might as well show you a tip, right? So if you take a post-it note, if you have something too short to get into a punch, you can just extend it like this. You see how that works? And now I can hold it and punch that out. So we're gonna take the seven, lucky seven. I hope I'm lucky enough to finish this video without starting over. Oh, if you only knew how many times tonight. Oh, I kind of overdid it with that glue. I'd rather it was on my fingers than on my project, guys. And I'll tell you an easy ways to get it off your fingers. And I still got some on my project, but it's good for you guys to see that we can do that at times. But I just roll it off my hands because it really dries pretty quickly. And then center this while you have a little bit of wiggle room, which is what I love about this. Well, it's just one of the reasons I love this. I love it also because it's such a good glue that you can rely on staying where you put it. Okay, so then once you've done all your numbers and you've put all your DSP on and then you've put all your numbers on your circles and then you've put all your circles on your blocks surprise you get one that's completed right and i've also already finished one of these so that you don't have to watch me go through all that because the process is the same and you do it all the way through okay so now we can work on the shelf that holds it all and you would start with an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. This is cherry cobbler. And I cut it right at five and a half. And then you get the five and a half by 11 piece. And then when you cut off an inch here, you get the three by 10 piece. And those are the two pieces you need for the majority of the shelf that these blocks go on okay so I'm going to show you how to score them and again you're going to take out your simply score and again in the portrait orientation you're going to do five and a half inches on both sides of your five and a half by eleven piece and then in the landscape you will do half an inch, two and a half inches, three inches, and then you're gonna do five and seven eighths, which is just that one little notch before six inches. And then you're done scoring this piece. And then with your three by 10 inch piece, you are gonna in portrait position, you're gonna score it three eighths of an inch. That's just one notch before half an inch. Then you're gonna turn it to the landscape position and you're gonna score it at two and five eighths. And then this is important. You could do it at seven and three eighths, but you also do wanna just double check that that's also two and five eighths, which it is, so that's good. Now, I like to simply score for a couple of reasons. One is because you can do so many scores in one time and it's just easier to me than the trimmer, but the trimmer's great because it cuts and it scores. But what I've done with my simply score is I've done a permanent marker mark right down halfway through the board at six inches. And so when you're gonna do diagonals, that really helps. So I'm taking, and this is important, you're not taking the corner of this three by 10 piece, but you're taking the corner of where the horizontal score mark goes. I've already got my 
my diagonal here, but you won't have that when you make your diagonal. So you're going to want this score to be in that gully, just like you would if it was your trimmer here. And you're going to want this score mark to end right in that gully. And once you've done that, you can do a straight line. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And it's important that you don't take it from from this score mark to this corner. You want it to be above this 3 8 inch line. So you're gonna just score it like that. I hope that makes sense. Okay, and that's your major scoring done. So we'll get that out here. And we're gonna start with, we'll start with, we'll start with this piece. Okay, so with your scissors, on this half inch side, you are going to cut up past the first score horizontal intersecting score mark, past the second one, and then on the third score mark, you're going to cut this off. And then you'll do the same thing to the other side. Right up to that third score mark. And you'll cut that off. And then the next score mark that you have, which if you remember was at five and seven eighths, you are going to miter it like this. And you're going to do that on both sides, which just means you're kind of making a triangle or a right angle or a it doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry about your geometry there. And that's what it should look like. Okay? These are all your sides that are scored. This side is only has the scores on these two margins. Okay. Then what you're going to do, again, with your bone folder or whatever folder you have to burnish, you're going to fold these all on the same lines or same directions initially until you get to this very last score line here. And this one, you're gonna fold the opposite direction, okay? So you should see that you have it all of these scored. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some adhesive on this tab here and we're gonna adhere it down right underneath this scoreboard. And that will make this kind of be a wall that goes at an angle, okay? But before we actually adhere that, I want to go ahead and fold these on the side. So we're gonna fold these up. And this up. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna do it. So with it all laying out this way, we're gonna put glue on this side and then we're gonna fold it up, okay? All right. And then you want this to be as straight as possible, but you also want to make sure it actually goes right underneath the score. And what you're looking at is really how straight this wall is here. It looks straight now. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay. So this kind of creates something that makes your cubes slide back and not fall over. So that's what the point of that is. Okay, now with these two ends folded up, what I like to do is I just come along here and so that this is at the same place as that and I just cut there. I hope that makes sense. And then I just cut here. And that just kind of trims it off a little bit there. It doesn't really matter too much because 
When we wrap this piece around, so we're gonna leave that to the side for a little bit, and then we're gonna work on this three by 10 piece. Again, we're gonna fold this up. It's the 3 8 inch side. Okay, and then on the triangles, we're gonna fold them down. this and this is just going to end up reinforcing the sides of our project so this is pretty sturdy on the outside flap you go ahead and put some glue and we're just going to glue that down and then do the same thing to this triangle Let's see. Don't want too much oozing out here. Although it's not really gonna matter that much. Okay. And then you're gonna fold these in on the score lines. Here we go. And then this one in. And those measurements should make this to fit around, they're gonna fit around this here. We're gonna put it up like this. <laughs> but before we do that, we're gonna do your favorite thing. I hope I haven't taken this out of the camera. We're gonna do your favorite thing and miter here at these two score marks. go and here all right now the fun part is gluing this all at once <laughs> so so that you know this wraps around and this 3 8 inch margin is going to go at the bottom like this can you see that if you wanted to if you didn't like this showing on the bottom of your box you could cover that with the same size um, cardstock but I'm cool with it so we're just going to glue that together I like to before I do this I do like to put a little bit of glue along the back of here and then a little bit of glue here here And here and likewise these flaps can have a little bit of glue I'm not doing it in the camera am I so here and that's really it okay so the glue here and here Now we're going to lay this in here. And up like that. Hopefully that gave us a nice. And now I like to put it, lay it down and do my whole making sure that it's got a good and you can see this is why we mitered here to bring these corners together and then I like to put it's flat here where we've put this flat oh this is a shadow and I keep thinking it's a piece of card set. this is what happens when I do it late at night okay so that's pretty good see and now that's working we can put our two boxes in there let's see let's do our 25. i should have told you that these in order to get all of the different options of our numbers here sometimes the red will be on the left and sometimes it'll be on the right but you can always make all of the different 
um, arrangements. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come here. We're gonna trim this later, but you're just gonna come down and you're just gonna kind of follow the pattern here. It doesn't, you kind of can't get it wrong. It's because it's kind of a lacy type look. So I just keep going around the edge. And then here down at the corner, I do like to make that go in because it's just about the right length for the side of this. And so then this one, see how much fatter it is? We're gonna need to thin that out. So I'm gonna come down. I don't know if we really do need to thin it out, but that's how I've always done it. If I think it through, yeah, we have to because we won't have that much hanging out the edge. So I do know what I'm talking about this time around, but not always. And again, see here, I'm gonna just round that in a little bit there. So now you have two of these. Now these are gonna be our sides. We're gonna put them on for our sides. It does mean that one of these is gonna really be the wrong side out, but it's not something you really notice. You can look at them and see if, you know, these are just fine either way. So what you don't want to do is glue, which I have done, glue the wrong side, like had two that you put the glue on the same side and then you couldn't use them. So you need to make sure that you figure that out and put them face up the side that needs glue. <laughs> So, now that I've sorted that out, so you should have two like this, you want to put right along this edge, remember I said to make sure you keep an edge, this is why, because this is where it's going to get glued on and you need something to put that glue on. If you have the adhesive sheets and you put them on the back of your cherry cobbler cardstock and run it through when you cut these out, then you can just pull that off. But then you're gonna have sticky here, and this is kind of in the air, so really even that won't work for this particular project. But you do have a little bit of a bottom, so you can do about two rows up that way, and just a little bit up this way. Let's see, this is already kind of drying under the camera light. So so I would not, I would do these one at a time, unlike the way I just did that other one. And just make sure you put it right in the corners of these. Because it really does fit. It fits almost exactly, you're going to see I'm going to do something at the top. But I always like to do it, put it on there first, so I'm sure about the top and so these big circles that can take a little bit of glue that really helps in securing it here but see right here where this meets then I just cut it across all right so that's one side done and that whoops I almost did it didn't I make sure you do that right <laughs> or you'll be die cutting another piece I have a, an extra green piece already die cut because I did the wrong way, but it'll work on one side. So maybe I'll do another one that color and I'll be all ready. Okay. And so now I can put this one on the other side. I'm really excited that we decided to do this because I have wanted to make a block calendar for the longest time. And deciding to do the 12 weeks to Christmas just really made me get to, to it and get it done. So see, that's kind of nice how that goes on the side. And then just cut that off. And we've got, we're getting there girls. We've got our holder. Now we want to decorate this inside piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pieces that I've already cut out, stamped and cut out. 
I'm going to end up covering these up, but isn't that beautiful? I wouldn't have to. I could just put it like this if I wanted to. But I have learned from my other one that I'm going to put bring this closer to the right-hand side so it looks like it's off-center. But once I put the leaves on, you'll see that it's not going to look so off center anymore and i haven't decided on the sample that i've shown you i only had um i only had two leaves i cut another one just in case i thought i could stick one in there and have it work and maybe i can but anyway that's what i want to do so if you're following along with this piece you are not, you, you, we're going to stamp it first. So I'm going to get mine ready and do that. And I'm stamping it in the cherry cobbler because so much of this is the green leaves. So to pick up those berries. And I'm using the Weary World Rejoices. And that's because I feel like everyone is waiting for the king. So that's like the lead up. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but I know what I mean. Okay, so once I've stamped that, I kind of like these stamp sets that have lines from all these traditional Christmas hymns. I really think you can't go wrong with some of those. The one we had before that said Hark the Herald, and um, I know we've got a few more this year that are doing this, so... Okay, so I'm going to turn this upside down because I think it'll be easier for me to place it. And I'm just going to remind you, I'm really coming over to the edge here to put this down. Now I want my lines pretty straight. And I'm realizing I haven't really done anything to get these very thin lines out. Now this one you can use that adhesive sheet on but as is my usual modus operandi I tend to think of these things too late and I end up making it harder for myself but you don't have to if you think to use adhesive sheets but it might be too late <laughs> because if you followed what I was doing from the beginning <laughs> I did not mention that Okay, so I, whoops, make sure that's down. I also find that if I stick my finger on these glue things, it actually comes up on my finger. You just have to be careful you're not tearing up the rest of it. So that looks really off center, right? But it's not going to once I put my holly leaves on. I did like, I think with one of them, I made it so this curved right around the, I think that's what I did in my other one, and this here. And so the question is, can I, now that I've moved this over, stick a third one in and do I even want to decisions decisions and then I stick the berries in here you know what guys I think I'm gonna stick to just the two which you know it's interesting because there's just two here I don't know why it bothers me that there's two and what I did, so I'm going to go ahead and do that with you now. I'm going to start with this one, and I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to have this little leaf curve around the, but they are hanging up over the top. So you want to make sure you're only putting the glue on the bottom half. See, I could do it there, but I'm going to do this one here. I just like the way that curves around the up here. And then I'm going to put this one up on dimensionals. So I've got my dimensionals here. 
And because I'm going to stick my berries down in there, I'm going to kind of go up the side so that I don't block where I end up putting those berries. So I'll be okay here too. All right, pull up those dimensional pieces. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this project and have been able to follow along and would even maybe make up a few of these. I know I've made up quite a few and I intend to make up some more still. And see, then you can stick these in and get that nice berry color coming out. How did I do it on this one? Oh, look at that. That one went way down. Huh. Well, it's too late now because I've already put that on there. So I'm just going to do it like that. See if they haven't seen, and you can see too that my ink was, I should have re-inked before I did those. So make sure you re-ink your pads before you put it together. I didn't realize it so much, but seeing these so dark, and I know these new foam pads tend to dry up a little bit faster, and I've been using it a lot. So here we go. I'm going to put this up here. Like that. Probably take some Wink of Stella to it later, right? And then here are our boxes. Let's go for 25, 2. Can't do it with that one, see? 2, 5. There we go. For the 25th. And there you have. Oh! I hope you guys see that. I've forgotten my little gold gems. So let's just take some of these. I love these oldie worldy greens and reds and having a bit of gold. I'm gonna put a big one next to this little one here. And it just kind of also fills up a little bit of Empty space, too. The weary world rejoices. There you have it. Finished project. I hope you like it, and I hope it didn't take too long and you're able to follow along. Thank you. Bye.